Section 20 of the Aeneid of Virgil. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book 10, Part 2. Young Pallas, when he saw the chief advance within due distance of his flying lance, prepares to charge him first, resolved to try if fortune would his want of force supply, and thus to heaven and Hercules addressed. Alcides, once on earth Evander's guest, his son adjures you by those holy rites, that hospitable board, those genial knights, assist my great attempt to gain this prize, and let proud Turnus view with dying eyes his ravished spoils. Twas heard the vain request, Alcides mourned and stifled sighs within his breast. Then Jove, to soothe his sorrow, thus began. Short bounds of life are set to mortal man. Tis virtue's work alone to stretch the narrow span. So many sons of gods in bloody fight Around the walls of Troy have lost the light. My own Sarpedon fell beneath his foe, Nor I his mighty sire could ward the blow. Even Turnus shortly shall resign his breath, And stands already on the verge of death. This said, the god permits the fatal fight but from the Latian fields averts his sight. Now with full force his spear young Pallas threw, and, having thrown, his shining falchion drew. The steel just grazed along the shoulder joint, and marked it slightly with a glancing point. Fierce Turnus first to nearer distance drew, and poised his pointed spear before he threw. Then, as the winged weapon whizzed along, See now, said he, whose arm is better strung. The spear kept on the fatal course, unstayed by plates of iron, which o'er the shield were laid. Through folded brass and tough bull hides it passed, his corslet pierced and reached his heart at last. In vain the youth tugs at the broken wood, the soul comes issuing with the vital blood. He falls, his arms upon his body sound, and with his bloody teeth he bites the ground. Turnus bestrode the corpse. Arcadians here, said he my message to your master bear such as the sire deserved the son i send it costs him dear to be the phrygian's friend the lifeless body tell him i bestow unasked to rest his wandering ghost below he said and trampled down with all the force of his left foot and spurned the wretched course then snatched the shining belt with gold inlaid the belt eurytion's artful hands had made where fifty fatal brides expressed to sight all in the compass of one mournful night deprived their bridegrooms of returning light in an ill hour insulting turnus tore those golden spoils and in a worse he wore o oh, mortals blind in fate who never know to bear high fortune or endure the low the time shall come when turnus but in vain shall wish untouched the trophies of the slain shall wish the fatal belt were far away and curse the dire remembrance of the day the sad arcadians from the unhappy field bear back the breathless body on a shield o oh, grace and grief of war at once restored with praises to thy sire at once deplored one day first sent thee to the fighting field beheld whole heaps of foes in battle killed one day beheld thee dead and borne upon thy shield this dismal news not from uncertain fame but sad spectators to the hero came his friends upon the brink of ruin stand unless relieved by his victorious hand he whirls his sword around without delay and hews through adverse foes an ample way to find fierce turnus of his conquest proud evander pallas all that friendship owed to large deserts are present to his eyes his plighted hand and hospitable ties four sons of sulmo four whom ufens bred he took in fight and living victims led to please the ghost of pallas and expire in sacrifice before his funeral fire at magus next he threw he stooped below the flying spear and shunned the promised blow then creeping clasped the hero's knees and prayed 
by young eulus by thy father's shade o spare my life and send me back to see my longing sire and tender progeny a lofty house i have and wealth untold in silver ingots and in bars of gold all these and sums besides which see no day the ransom of this one poor life shall pay if i survive will troy the less prevail a single soul's too light to turn the scale the hero sternly thus replied thy bars and ingots and the sums beside leave for thy children's lot thy turnus broke all rules of war by one relentless stroke when pallas fell so deems nor deems alone my father's shadow but my living son thus having said of kind remorse bereft he seized his helm and dragged him with his left then with his right hand while his neck he wreathed up to the hilts his shining falchion sheathed apollo's priest emonides was near his holy fillets on his front appear glittering in arms he shone amidst the crowd much of his god more of his purple proud him the fierce trojan followed through the field the holy coward fell and forced to yield the prince stood o'er the priest and at one blow sent him an offering to the shades below his arms seresthus on his shoulders bears designed a trophy to the god of wars vulcanian caeculus renews the fight and umbro born upon the mountain's height the champion cheers his troops to encounter those and seeks revenge himself on other foes at anxur's shield he drove and at the blow both shield and arm to ground together go anxur had boasted much of magic charms and thought he wore impenetrable arms so made by muttered spells and from the spheres had life secured in vain for length of years then tarquitus the field in triumph trod a nymph his mother his sire a god exulting in bright arms he braves the prince with his protended lance he makes defence bears back his feeble foe then pressing on arrests his better hand and drags him down stands o'er the prostrate wretch and as he lay vain tales inventing and prepared to pray mows off his head the trunk a moment stood then sunk and rolled along the sand in blood the vengeful victor thus upbraids the slain lie there proud man unpitied on the plain lie there inglorious and without a tomb far from thy mother and thy native home exposed to savage beasts and birds of prey or thrown for food to monsters of the sea on lycus and antaeus next he ran two chiefs of turnus who led his van they fled for fear with these he chased along camers the yellow locked and numa strong both great in arms and both were fair and young camers was son to volscens lately slain in wealth surpassing all the latian train and in amicla fixed his silent easy reign and as a Gaian, when with heaven he strove stood opposite in arms to mighty jove moved all his hundred hands provoked the war defied the forky lightning from afar at fifty mouths his flaming breath expires and flash for flash returns and fires for fires in his right hand as many swords he wields and takes the thunder on as many shields with strength like his the trojan hero stood and soon the fields with falling corpse were strowed when once his falchion found the taste of blood with fury scarce to be conceived he flew against nepheus whom four coursers drew they when they see the fiery chief advance and pushing at their chests his pointed lance wheeled with so swift a motion mad with fear they threw their master headlong from the chair they stare they start nor stop their course before they bear the bounding chariot to the shore now lucagus and liger scour the plains with two white steeds but liger holds the reins and lucagus the lofty seat maintains bold brethren both the former waved in air his flaming sword aeneas couched his spear unused to threats and more unused to fear then liger thus thy confidence is vain to escape from hence as from the trojan plain 
nor these the steeds which diomede bestrode nor this the chariot where achilles rode nor venus veil is here near neptune's shield thy fatal hour is come and this the field thus liger vainly vaunts the trojan peer returned his answer with his flying spear as lucagus to lash his horses bends prone to the wheels and his left foot portends prepared for fight the fatal dart arrives and through the borders of his buckler drives passed through and pierced his groin the deadly wound cast from his chariot rolled him on the ground whom thus the chief upbraids with scornful spite blame not the slowness of your steeds in flight vain shadows did not force their swift retreat but you yourself forsake your empty seat he said and seized at once the loosened rein for liger lay already on the plain by the same shock then stretching out his hands the recreant thus his wretched life demands now by thyself o more than mortal man by her and him from whom thy breath began who formed thee thus divine i beg thee spare this forfeit life and hear thy suppliant's prayer thus much he spoke and more he would have said but the stern hero turned aside his head and cut him short i hear another man you talked not thus before the fight began now take your turn and as a brother should attend your brothers to the stygian flood then through his breast his fatal sword he sent and the soul issued at the gaping vent as storms the skies and torrents tear the ground thus raged the prince and scattered deaths around at length ascanius and the trojan train broke from the camp so long besieged in vain meantime the king of gods and mortal man held conference with his queen and thus began my sister goddess and well-pleasing wife still think you venus aid supports the strife sustains her trojans or themselves alone with inborn valour force their fortune on how fierce in fight with courage undecayed judge if such warriors want immortal aid to whom the goddess with the charming eyes soft in her tone submissively replies why o oh my sovereign lord whose frown i fear and cannot unconcerned your anger bear why urge you thus my grief when if i still as once i was were mistress of your will from your almighty power your pleasing wife might gain the grace of lengthening turnus life securely snatch him from the fatal fight and give him to his aged father's sight now let him perish since you hold it good and glut the trojans with his pious blood yet from our lineage he derives his name and in the fourth degree from god pelimnus came yet he devoutly pays you rites divine and offers daily incense at your shrine then shortly thus the sovereign god replied since in my power and goodness you confide if for a little space a lengthened span you beg reprieve for this expiring man i grant you leave to take your turnus hence from instant fate and can so far dispense but if some secret meaning lies beneath to save the short-lived youth from destined death or if a farther thought you entertain to change the fates you feed your hopes in vain to whom the goddess thus with weeping eyes and what if that request your tongue denies your heart should grant and not a short reprieve but length of certain life to turnus give now speedy death attends the guiltless youth if my presaging soul divines with truth which oh i wish might err through causeless fears and you for you have power prolong his years thus having said involved in clouds she flies and drives a storm before her through the skies swift she descends alighting on the plain where the fierce foes a dubious fight maintain of air condensed a spectre soon she made and what aeneas was such seemed the shade adorned with dardan arms the phantom bore his head aloft a plumy crest he wore this hand appeared a shining sword to wield and that sustained an imitated shield 
with manly mien he stalked along the ground nor wanted voice belied nor vaunting sound thus haunting ghosts appear to waking sight or dreadful visions in our dreams by night the spectre seems the downian chief to dare and flourishes his empty sword in air at this advancing turnus hurled his spear the phantom wheeled and seemed to fly for fear deluded turnus thought the trojan fled and with vain hopes his haughty fancy fed whether o coward thus he calls aloud nor found he spoke to wind and chased a cloud why thus forsake your bride receive from me the fated land you sought so long by sea he said and brandishing at once his blade with eager pace pursued the flying shade by chance a ship was fastened to the shore which from old clusium king osinius bore the plank was ready laid for safe ascent for shelter there the trembling shadow bent and skipped and skulked and under hatches went exulting turnus with regardless haste ascends the plank and to the galley passed scarce had he reached the prow saturnia's hand the halsers cuts and shoots the ship from land with wind in poop the vessel ploughs the sea and measures back with speed her former way meantime aeneas seeks his absent foe and sends his slaughtered troops to shades below the guileful phantom now forsook the shroud and flew sublime and vanished in a cloud too late young turnus the delusion found far on the sea still making from the ground then thankless for a life redeemed by shame with sense of honour stung and forfeit fame fearful besides of what in fight had passed his hands and haggard eyes to heaven he cast o jove he cried for what offence have deserved to bear this endless infamy whence am i forced and whither am i born how and with what reproach shall i return shall ever i behold the latian plain or see laurentum's lofty towers again what will they say of their deserting chief the war was mine i fly from their relief i led to slaughter and in slaughter leave and even from hence their dying groans receive here overmatched in fight in heaps they lie there scattered o'er the fields ignobly fly gape wide o earth and draw me down alive or o ye pitying winds a wretch relieve on sands or shelves the splitting vessel drive or set me shipwrecked on some desert shore where no rutulian eyes may see me more unknown to friends or foes or conscious fame lest she should follow and my flight proclaim thus turnus raved and various fates revolved the choice was doubtful but the death resolved and now the sword and now the sea took place that to revenge and this to purge disgrace sometimes he thought to swim the stormy main by stretch of arms the distant shore to gain thrice he the sword assayed and thrice the flood but juno moved with pity both withstood and thrice repressed his rage strong gales supplied and pushed the vessel o'er the swelling tide at length she lands him on his native shores and to his father's longing arms restores meantime by jove's impulse mezentius armed succeeding turnus with his ardour warmed his fainting friends reproached their shameful flight repelled the victors and renewed the fight against their king the tuscan troops conspire such is their hate and such their fierce desire of wished revenge on him and him alone all hands employed and all their darts are thrown he like a solid rock by seas enclosed to raging winds and roaring waves opposed from his proud summit looking down disdains their empty menace and unmoved remains beneath his feet fell haughty hebrus dead then latagus and palmus as he fled at latagus a weighty stone he flung his face was flatted and his helmet wrung but palmus from behind receives his wound hamstringed he falls and grovels on the ground his crest and armour from his body torn thy shoulders lausus and thy head adorn 
Evas and Mimas, both of Troy, he slew. Mimas, his birth, from fair Theano drew. Born on that fatal night, when big with fire the queen produced young Paris to his sire. But Paris in the Phrygian fields was slain, unthinking Mimas on the Latian plain. And as a savage boar on mountains bred, with forest mast and fattening marshes fed, when once he sees himself in toils enclosed by huntsmen and their eager hounds opposed, he wets his tusks and turns and dares the war. The invaders dart their javelins from afar, all keep aloof and safely shout around. But none presumes to give a nearer wound. He frets and froths, erects his bristled hide, and shakes a grove of lances from his side. Not otherwise the troops with hate inspired, and just revenge against the tyrant fired. Their darts with clamour at a distance strive, and only keep the languished war alive. From Coritus came Acron to the fight, who left his spouse betrothed and unconsummate knight. Mezentius sees him through the squadron's ride, proud of the purple favours of his bride. Then, as a hungry lion who beholds a gamesome goat who frisks about the folds, or beamy stag that grazes on the plain, he runs, he roars, he shakes his rising mane, he grins and opens wide his greedy jaws, the prey lies panting underneath his paws, he fills his famished maw, his mouth runs o'er with unchewed morsels while he churns the gore. So proud Mazentius rushes on his foes, and first unhappy Akron overthrows. Stretched at his length he spurns the swarthy ground, the lance, besmeared with blood, lies broken in the wound. Then with disdain the haughty victor viewed Orodes flying, nor the wretch pursued, nor thought the dastard's back deserved a wound. But running gained the advantage of the ground. Then turning short he met him face to face, to give his victor the better grace. Orodes falls in equal fight oppressed. Mezentius fixed his foot upon his breast, and rested lance, and thus aloud he cries, Lo, here the champion of my rebels lies. The fields around with Io Paeon ring, and peals of shouts applaud the conquering king. At this the vanquished with his dying breath thus faintly spoke and prophesied in death. Nor thou, proud man, unpunished shalt remain. Like death attends thee on this fatal plain. Then, sourly smiling, thus the king replied, For what belongs to me let Jove provide, But die thou first, whatever chance ensue. He said, and from the wound the weapon drew. A hovering mist came swimming o'er his sight, And sealed his eyes in everlasting night. By Caedicus Alcathus was slain, Sacrator laid Hidaspes on the plain. Orses the strong to greater strength must yield, He with Parthenius were by Rapo killed. Then brave Messapus Erechites slew, Who from Lycaon's blood his lineage drew. But from his headstrong horse his fate he found, Who threw his master as he made a bound, the chief alighting stuck him to the ground. Then Clonius hand to hand on foot assails, The Trojan sinks, and Neptune's son prevails. Aegis the Lycian, stepping forth with pride, To single fight the boldest foe defied, Whom Tuscan Valerus by force o'ercame, And not belied his mighty father's fame. Salius to death the great Antronius sent, But the same fate the victor underwent, Slain by Nelke's hand, well skilled to throw the flying dart, and draw the far-deceiving bow. Thus equal deaths are dealt with equal chance. By turns they quit their ground, by turns advance. Victors and vanquished in the various field, nor wholly overcome, nor wholly yield. The gods from heaven survey the fatal strife, and mourn the miseries of human life. Above the rest two goddesses appear, concerned for each. Here Venus, Juno there, amidst the crowd, Infernal Ate shakes her scourge aloft, And crest of hissing snakes. Once more the proud Mazentius with disdain Brandished his spear and rushed into the plain, 
where towering in the midmost rank she stood like tall orion stalking o'er the flood when with his brawny breast he cuts the waves his shoulders scarce the topmost billow laves or like a mountain ash whose roots are spread deep fixed in earth in clouds he hides his head the trojan prince beheld him from afar and dauntless undertook the doubtful war collected in his strength and like a rock poised on his base mezentius stood the shock he stood and measuring first with careful eyes the space his spear could reach aloud he cries my strong right hand and sword assist my stroke those only gods mezentius will invoke his armor from the trojan pirate torn by my triumphant lausus shall be worn he said and with his utmost force he threw the massy spear which hissing as it flew reached the celestial shield that stopped the course but glancing thence the yet unbroken force took a new bent obliquely and betwixt the side and bowels famed anthores fixed anthores had from argos travelled far alcides friend and brother of the war till tired with toils fair italy he chose and in evander's palace sought repose now falling by another's wound his eyes he cast to heaven on argos thinks and dies the pious trojan then his javelin sent the shield gave way through treble plates it went of solid brass of linen trebly rolled and three bull hides which round the buckler fold all these it passed resistless in the course transpierced his thigh and spent its dying force the gaping wound gushed out a crimson flood the trojan glad with sight of hostile blood his falchion drew to closer fight addressed and with new force his fainting foe oppressed his father's peril lausus viewed with grief he sighed he wept he ran to his relief and here heroic youth tis here i must to thy immortal memory be just and sing an act so noble and so new posterity will scarce believe tis true pained with his wound and useless for the fight the father sought to save himself by flight encumbered slow he dragged the spear along which pierced his thigh and in his buckler hung the pious youth resolved on death below the lifted sword springs forth to face the foe protects his parent and prevents the blow shouts of applause ran ringing through the field to see the son the vanquished father shield all fired with generous indignation strive and with a storm of darts to distance drive the trojan chief who held at bay from far on his vulcanian orb sustained the war as when thick hail comes rattling in the wind the ploughman passenger and labouring hind for shelter to the neighbouring covert fly or housed or safe in hollow caverns lie but that or blown when heaven above em smiles return to travel and renew their toils aeneas thus o'erwhelmed on every side the storm of darts undaunted did abide and thus to lausus loud with friendly threatening cried why wilt thou rush to certain death and rage and rash attempts beyond thy tender age betrayed by pious love nor thus forborne the youth desists but with insulting scorn provokes the lingering prince whose patience tired gave place and all his breast with fury fired for now the fates prepared their sharpened shears and lifted high the flaming sword appears which full descending with a frightful sway through shield and corslet forced the impetuous way and buried deep in his fair bosom lay the purple streams through the thin armor strove and drenched the embroidered coat his mother wove and life at length forsook his heaving heart loath from so sweet a mansion to depart but when with blood and paleness all o'erspread the pious youth beheld young lausus dead he grieved he wept the sight an image brought of his own filial love a sadly pleasing thought then stretched his hand to hold him up and said poor hapless youth what praises can be paid to love so great to such transcendent store of early worth and sure presage of more except whate'er aeneas can afford untouched thy arms untaken be thy sword and all that pleased thee living still remain inviolate and sacred to the slain 
Thy body on thy parents I bestow, To rest thy soul at least, if shadows know, Or have a sense of human things below. There to thy fellow ghosts with glory tell, Twas by the great Aeneas' hand I fell. With this his distant friends he beckons near, Provokes their duty and prevents their fear, Himself assists to lift him from the ground, With clotted locks and blood that welled from out the wound. Meantime his father, now no father, stood, And washed his wounds by Tiber's yellow flood. Oppressed with anguish, panting and o'erspent, His fainting limbs against an oak he leant. A bow his brazen helmet did sustain, His heavier arms lay scattered on the plain. A chosen train of youth around him stand, His drooping head was rested on his hand, His grisly beard his pensive bosom sought, and all on Lausus ran his restless thought. Careful, concerned his danger to prevent, he much inquired and many a message sent to warn him from the field. Alas, in vain! Behold, his mournful followers bear him slain. O'er his broad shield still gushed the yawning wound, and drew a bloody trail along the ground. Far off he heard their cries, far off divined the dire event with a foreboding mind. With dust he sprinkled first his hoary head, Then both his lifted hands to heaven he spread. Last the dear corpse embracing thus he said, What joys, alas, could this frail being give, That I have been so covetous to live, To see my son and such a son resign his life A ransom for preserving mine? And am I then preserved, and art thou lost? How much too dear has that redemption cost? Tis now my bitter banishment I feel. This is a wound too deep for time to heal. My guilt thy growing virtues did defame. My blackness blotted thy unblemished name. Chased from a throne, abandoned and exiled for foul misdeeds, were punishments too mild. I owed my people these, and from their hate, with less resentment could have borne my fate, and yet I live, and yet sustain the sight of hated men and of more hated light, but will not long. With that he raised from ground his fainting limbs that staggered with his wound. Yet with a mind resolved and unappalled with pains or perils for his courser called, well-mouthed, well-managed, who himself did dress with daily care and mounted with success, his aid in arms, his ornament in peace. Soothing his courage with a gentle stroke, the steed seemed sensible while thus he spoke. O Rebus, we have lived too long for me, if life and long were terms that could agree. This day thou either shalt bring back the head and bloody trophies of the Trojan dead. This day thou either shalt revenge my woe for murdered Lausus on his cruel foe, or if inexorable fate deny our conquest with thy conquered master die for after such a lord i rest secure thou wilt no foreign reins or trojan load endure he said and straight the officious courser kneels to take his wonted weight his hands he fills with pointed javelins on his head he laced his glittering helm which terribly was graced with waving horsehair nodding from afar then spurred his thundering steed amidst the war. Love, anguish, wrath, and grief to madness wrought, despair and secret shame and conscious thought of inborn worth his laboring soul oppressed, rolled in his eyes and raged within his breast. Then loud he called Aeneas thrice by name. The loud repeated voice to glad Aeneas came. Great Jove, he said, and the far-shooting God, Inspire thy mind to make thy challenge good. He spoke no more, but hastened void of fear, And threatened with his long-protended spear. To whom Mezentius thus, Thy vaunts are vain, My Lausus lies extended on the plain, He's lost, thy conquest is already won, The wretched sire is murdered in the sun. Nor fate I fear, but all the gods defy, Forbear thy threats, my business is to die but first receive this parting legacy. He said, and straight a whirling dart he sent, another after, and another went, 
Round in a spacious ring he rides the field, and vainly plies the impenetrable shield. Thrice rode he round, and thrice Aeneas wheeled, turned as he turned. The golden orb withstood the strokes, and bore about an iron wood, impatient of delay and weary groan, still to defend and to defend alone, to wrench the darts which in his buckler light urged and o'erlaboured in unequal fight. At length resolved, he throws with all his force full at the temples of the warrior horse. Just where the stroke was aimed, the unerring spear made way, and stood transfixed through either ear. Seized with unwonted pain, surprised with fright, the wounded steed curvets and raised upright, lights on his feet before, his hoofs behind spring up in air aloft and lash the wind. Down comes the rider headlong from his height, his horse came after with unwieldy weight, and floundering forward, pitching on his head, his lord's encumbered shoulder overlaid. From either host the mingled shouts and cries of Trojans and Rutulians rend the skies. Aeneas, hastening, waved his fatal sword high o'er his head with this reproachful word. Now where are now thy vaunts the fierce disdain of proud Mazentius and the lofty strain? Struggling and wildly staring on the skies, with scarce recovered sight, he thus replies, Why these insulting words, this waste of breath, to souls undaunted and secure of death? Tis no dishonour for the brave to die, nor came I here with hope victory, nor ask I life, nor fought with that design, as I had used my fortune, use thou thine. My dying son contracted no such band, the gift is hateful from his murderer's hand. For this, this only favour let me sue. If pity can to conquered foes be due, refuse it not, but let my body have the last retreat of humankind a grave. Too well I know the insulting people's hate. Protect me from their vengeance after fate. This refuge for my poor remains provide, and lay my much-loved losses by my side. He said, and to the sword his throat applied. The crimson stream disdained his arms around, and the disdainful soul came rushing through the wound. End of section 20section 21 of the Aeneid of Virgil. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Aeneid of Virgil, translated by John Dryden. Book 11, Part 1. Scarce had the rosy morning raised her head above the waves and left her watery bed. The pious chief, whom double cares attend for his unburied soldiers and his friend, yet first to heaven performed a victor's vows. He bared an ancient oak of all her boughs. Then on a rising ground the trunk he placed, which with the spoils of his dead foe he graced. The coat of arms by proud Mazentius worn, now on a naked snag in triumph borne, was hung on high and glittered from afar, a trophy sacred to the god of war. Above his arms, fixed on the leafless wood, appeared his plumy crest besmeared with blood. His brazen buckler on the left was seen, truncheons of shivered lances hung between, and on the right was placed his corslet board, and to the neck was tied his unavailing sword. A crowd of chiefs enclosed the godlike man, who thus conspicuous in the midst began. Our toils, my friends, are crowned with sure success. The greater part performed achieve the less. Now follow cheerful to the trembling town, press but an entrance and presume it won. Fear is no more, for fierce Mazentius lies as the first fruits of war a sacrifice. Turnus shall fall extended on the plain, and in this omen is already slain. Prepared in arms, pursue your happy chance, that none unwarned may plead his ignorance. And I, at heaven's appointed hour, may find your warlike ensigns waving in the wind. Meantime the rites and funeral pomps prepare, due to your dead companions of the war. 
the last respect the living can bestow to shield their shadows from contempt below that conquered earth be theirs for which they fought and which for us with their own blood they bought but first the corpse of our unhappy friend to the sad city of evander send who not inglorious in his age's bloom was hurried hence by too severe a doom thus weeping while he spoke he took his way where new in death lamented pallas lay Achetus watched the corpse whose youth deserved the father's trust and now the son he served with equal faith but less auspicious care the attendants of the slain his sorrow share a troop of trojans mixed with these appear and mourning matrons with dishevelled hair soon as the prince appears they raise a cry all beat their breasts and echoes rend the sky they rear his drooping forehead from the ground but when aeneas viewed the grisly wound which pallas in his manly bosom bore and the fair flesh disdained with purple gore first melting into tears the pious man deplored so sad a sight then thus began unhappy youth when fortune gave the rest of my full wishes she refused the best she came but brought not thee along to bless my longing eyes and share in my success she grudged thy safe return the triumphs due to prosperous valour in the public view not thus i promised when thy father lent thy needless succour with a sad consent embraced me parting for the Etrurian land and sent me to possess a large command he warned and from his own experience told our foes were warlike disciplined and bold and now perhaps in hopes of thy return rich odours on his loaded altars burn while we with vain officious pomp prepare to send him back his portion of the war a bloody breathless body which can owe no farther debt but to the powers below the wretched father ere his race is run shall view the funeral honours of his son these are my triumphs of the latian war fruits of my plighted faith and boasted care and yet unhappy sire thou shalt not see a son whose death disgraced his ancestry thou shalt not blush old man however grieved thy palace no dishonest wound received he died no death to make thee wish too late thou hadst not lived to see his shameful fate but what a champion has the ausonian coast and what a friend hast thou ascanius lost thus having mourned he gave the word around to raise the breathless body from the ground and chose a thousand horse the flower of all his warlike troops to wait the funeral to bear him back and share evander's grief a well becoming but a weak relief of oaken twigs they twist an easy bier then on their shoulders the sad burden rear the body on this rural hearse is borne strewed leaves and funeral greens the bier adorn all pale he lies and looks a lovely flower new cropped by virgin hands to dress the bower unfaded yet but yet unfed below no more to mother earth or the green stern shall owe than two fair vests of wondrous work and cost of purple woven and with gold embossed for ornament the trojan hero brought which with her hands sidonian dido wrought one vest arrayed the corpse and one they spread o'er his closed eyes and wrapped around his head that when the yellow hair in flame should fall the catching fire might burn the golden call besides the spoils of foes in battle slain when he descended on the latian plain arms trappings horses by the hearse are led in long array the achievements of the dead then pinioned with their hands behind appear the unhappy captives marching in the rear appointed offerings in the victor's name to sprinkle with their blood the funeral flame inferior trophies by the chiefs are borne gauntlets and helms their loaded hands adorn and fair inscriptions fixed and titles read of latian leaders conquered by the dead Achetes on his pupil's corpse attends with feeble steps supported by his friends 
pausing at every pace in sorrow drowned betwixt their arms he sinks upon the ground where grovelling while he lies in deep despair he beats his breast and rends his hoary hair the champion's chariot next is seen to roll besmeared with hostile blood and honourably foul to close the pomp aethon the steed of state is led the funerals of his lord to wait stripped of his trappings with a sullen pace he walks and the big tears run rolling down his face the lance of pallas and the crimson crest are borne behind the victor seized the rest the march begins the trumpets hoarsely sound the pikes and lances trail along the ground thus while the trojan and arcadian horse to palantian towers direct their course in long procession ranked the pious chief stopped in the rear and gave a vent to grief the public care he said which war attends diverts our present woes at least suspends peace with the manes of great palace dwell hail holy relics and a last farewell he said no more but inly through he mourned restrained his tears and to the camp returned now suppliants from laurentum sent demand a truce with olive branches in their hand obtest his clemency and from the plain beg leave to draw the bodies of their slain they plead that none those common rights deny to conquered foes that in fair battle die all cause of hate was ended in their death nor could he war with bodies void of breath a king they hoped would hear a king's request whose son he once was called and once his guest their suit which was too just to be denied the hero grants and farther thus replied o latian princes how severe a fate in causeless quarrels has involved your state and armed against an unoffending man who sought your friendship ere the war began you beg a truce which i would gladly give not only for the slain but those who live i came not hither but by heaven's command and sent by fate to share the latian land nor wage i wars unjust your king denied my proffered friendship and my promised bride left me for turnus turnus then should try his cause in arms to conquer or to die my right and his are in dispute the slain fell without fault our quarrel to maintain in equal arms let us alone contend and let him vanquish whom his fates befriend this is the way so tell him to possess the royal virgin and restore the peace bear this message back with ample leave that your slain friends may funeral rites receive thus having said the ambassadors amazed stood mute a while and on each other gazed Drances, their chief who harbored in his breast long hate to turnus as his foe professed broke silence first and to the godlike man with graceful action bowing thus began auspicious prince in arms a mighty name but yet whose actions far transcend your fame would i your justice or your force express thought can but equal and all words are less your answer we shall thankfully relate and favours granted to the latian state if wished success our labour shall attend think peace concluded and the king your friend let turnus leave the realm to your command and seek alliance in some other land build you the city which your fates assign we shall be proud in the great work to join thus drances and his words so well persuade the rest empowered that soon a truce is made twelve days the term allowed and during those latians and trojans now no longer foes mixed in the woods for funeral piles prepare to fell the timber and forget the war loud axes through the groaning groves resound oak mountain ash and poplar spread the ground first fall from high and some the trunks receive in loaden wains with wedges some they cleave and now the fatal news by fame is blown through the short circuit of the arcadian town of pallas slain by fame which just before his triumphs on distended pinions bore rushing from out the gate the people stand 
each with a funeral flambeau in his hand. Wildly they stare, distracted with amaze. The fields are lightened with a fiery blaze that cast a sullen splendor on their friends, the marching troop which their dead prince attends. Both parties meet, they raise a doleful cry, the matrons from the walls with shrieks reply, and their mixed mourning rends the vaulted sky. The town is filled with tumult and with tears, till the loud clamors reach Evander's ears. Forgetful of his state, he runs along with a disordered pace, and cleaves the throng, falls on the corpse, and groaning there he lies with silent grief that speaks but at his eyes. Short sighs and sobs succeed, till sorrow breaks a passage, and at once he weeps and speaks. O oh, Pallas, thou hast failed thy plighted word to fight with caution, not to tempt the sword. I warned thee but in vain, for well I knew what perils youthful ardor would pursue, that boiling blood would carry thee too far, young as thou wert in dangers, raw to war. O oh, cursed essay of arms, disastrous doom, prelude of bloody fields and fights to come hard elements of unauspicious war vain vows to heaven and unavailing care thrice happy thou dear partner of my bed whose holy soul the stroke of fortune fled priscius of ills and leaving me behind to drink the dregs of life by fate assigned beyond the goal of nature i have gone my palace late set out but reached too soon if for my league against the Ausonian state, amidst their weapons I had found my fate deserved from them, then I had been returned a breathless victor, and my son had mourned. Yet will I not my Trojan friend upbraid, nor grudge the alliance I so gladly made. T'was not his fault my palace fell so young, but my own crime for having lived too long. Yet since the gods had destined him to die, at least he led the way to victory. First for his friends he won the fatal shore, and sent whole herds of slaughtered foes before, a death too great, too glorious to deplore, nor will I add new honours to thy grave, content with those the Trojan hero gave. That funeral pomp thy Phrygian friends designed, in which the Tuscan chiefs and army joined, great spoils and trophies gained by thee they bear then let thy own achievements be thy share even thou o turnus hadst a trophy stood whose mighty trunk had better graced the wood if pallas had arrived with equal length of years to match thy bulk with equal strength but why unhappy man dost thou detain these troops to view the tears thou sheddest in vain go friends this message to your lord relate. Tell him that, if I bear my bitter fate, and after Pallas' death live lingering on, tis to behold his vengeance for my son. I stay for Turnus, whose devoted head is owing to the living and the dead. My son and I expect it from his hand. Tis all that he can give or we demand. Joy is no more but I would gladly go to greet my palace with such news below. The morn had now dispelled the shades of night, restoring toils when she restored the light. The Trojan king and Tuscan chief command to raise the piles along the winding strand. Their friends convey the dead funeral fires, black smouldering smoke from the green wood expires, the light of heaven is choked, and the new day retires. Then thrice around the kindled piles they go, for ancient custom had ordained it so. Thrice horse and foot about the fires are led, and thrice with loud laments they hail the dead. Tears trickling down their breasts bedew the ground, and drums and trumpets mix their mournful sound. Amid the blaze their pious brethren throw the spoils in battle taken from the foe. Helms, bits embossed, and swords of shining steel. One casts a target, one a chariot wheel. Some to their fellows their own arms restore, The falchions which in luckless fight they bore. Their bucklers pierced, their darts bestowed in vain, 
and shivered lances gathered from the plain whole herds of offered bulls about the fire and bristled boars and woolly sheep expire around the piles a careful troop attends to watch the wasting flames and weep their burning friends lingering along the shore till dewy night new decks the face of heaven with starry light the conquered latians with like pious care piles without number for their dead prepare part in the places where they fell are laid and part are to the neighboring fields conveyed the corpse of kings and captains of renown borne off in state are buried in the town the rest unhonored and without a name are cast a common heap to feed the flame trojans and latians vie with like desires to make the field of battle shine with fires and the promiscuous blaze to heaven aspires now had the morning thrice renewed the light and thrice dispelled the shadows of the night when those who round the wasted fires remain perform the last sad office to the slain they rake the yet warm ashes from below these and the bones unburned in earth bestow these relics with their country rites they grace and raise a mount of turf to mark the place but in the palace of the king appears a scene more solemn and a pomp of tears maids matrons widows mix their common moans orphans their sires and sires lament their sons all in that universal sorrow share and curse the cause of this unhappy war a broken league a bride unjustly sought a crown usurped which with their blood is bought these are the crimes with which they load the name of turnus and on him alone exclaim let him who lords it o'er the ausonian land engage the trojan hero hand to hand his is the gain our lot is but to serve tis just the sway he seeks he should deserve this drances aggravates and adds with spite his foe expects and dares him to the fight nor turnus wants a party to support his cause and credit in the latian court his former acts secure his present fame and the queen shades him with her mighty name while thus their factious minds with fury burn the legates from the aetolian prince return sad news they bring that after all the cost and care employed their embassy is lost that diomedes refused his aid in war unmoved with presence and as deaf to prayer some new alliance must elsewhere be sought or peace with troy on hard conditions bought latinus sunk in sorrow finds too late a foreign son is pointed out by fate and till aeneas shall lavinia wed the wrath of heaven is hovering o'er his head the gods he saw espoused the juster side when late their titles in the field were tried witness the fresh laments and funeral tears undried thus full of anxious thought he summons all the latian senate to the council hall the princes come commanded by their head and crowd the paths that to the palace lead supreme in power and reverenced for his years he takes the throne and in the midst appears majestically sad he sits in state and bids his envoys their success relate when venulus began the murmuring sound was hushed and sacred silence reigned around we have said he performed your high command and passed with peril a long tract of land we reached the place desired with wonder filled the grecian tents and rising towers beheld great diomede has compassed round with walls the city which argiripa he calls from his own argos named we touched with joy the royal hand that raised unhappy troy when introduced our presence first we bring then crave an instant audience from the king his leave obtained our native soil we name and tell the important cause for which we came attentively he heard us while we spoke then with soft accents and a pleasing look made this return ausonian race of old renowned for peace and for an age of gold what madness has your altered minds possessed to change for war hereditary rest 
solicit arms unknown and tempt the sword a needless ill your ancestors abhorred we for myself i speak and all the name of grecians who to troy's destruction came omitting those who were in battle slain or borne by rolling simois to the main not one but suffered and too dearly bought the prize of honour which in arms he sought some doomed to death and some in exile driven outcasts abandoned by the care of heaven so worn so wretched so despised a crew as even old priam might with pity view witness the vessels by minerva tossed in storms the vengeful capharian coast the evian rocks the prince whose brother led our armies to avenge his injured bed in egypt lost ulysses with his men have seen charybdis and the cyclops din why should i name idomeneus in vain restored to sceptres and expelled again or young achilles by his rival slain even he the king of men the foremost name of all the greeks and most renowned by fame the proud revenger of another's wife yet by his own adulteress lost his life fell at his threshold and the spoils of troy the foul polluters of his bed enjoy the gods have envied me the sweets of life my much-loved country and my more loved wife banished from both i mourn while in the sky transformed to birds my lost companions fly hovering about the coasts they make their moan and cuff the cliffs with pinions not their own what squalid spectres in the dead of night break my short sleep and skim before my sight i might have promised to myself those harms mad as i was when i with mortal arms presumed against immortal powers to move and violate with wounds the queen of love such arms this hand shall never more employ no hate remains with me to ruined troy i war not with its dust nor am i glad to think of past events or good or bad your presence i return whate'er you bring to buy my friendship send the trojan king we met in fight i know him to my cost with what a whirling force his lance he tossed heavens what a spring was in his arm to throw how high he held his shield and rose at every blow had troy produced two more his match in might they would have changed the fortune of the fight the invasion of the greeks had been returned our empire wasted and our cities burned the long defence the trojan people made the war protracted and the siege delayed were due to hector's and this hero's hand both brave alike and equal in command aeneas not inferior in the field in pious reverence to the gods excelled make peace ye latians and avoid with care the impending dangers of a fatal war he said no more but with this cold excuse refused the alliance and advised a truce thus venulus concluded his report a jarring murmur filled the factious court as when a torrent rolls with rapid force and dashes o'er the stones that stop the course the flood constrained within a scanty space roars horrible along the uneasy race white foam in gathering eddies floats around the rocky shores rebellow to the sound the murmur ceased then from his lofty throne the king invoked the gods and thus begun i wish ye latins what we now debate had been resolved before it was too late much better had it been for you and me unforced by this our last necessity to have been earlier wise than now to call a council when the foe surrounds the wall o citizens we wage unequal war with men not only heaven's peculiar care but heaven's own race unconquered in the field or conquered yet unknowing how to yield what hopes you had in diomedes lay down our hopes must centre on ourselves alone yet those how feeble and indeed how vain you see too well nor need my words explain vanquished without resource laid flat by fate factions within a foe without the gate not but i grant that all performed their parts with manly force 
and with undaunted hearts. With our united strength the war we waged, with equal numbers, equal arms engaged. You see the event, now hear what I propose, to save our friends and satisfy our foes. A tract of land the Latins have possessed along the Tiber, stretching to the west, which now Rutulians and Auruncans till, and their mixed cattle graze the fruitful hill. Those mountains filled with firs, that lower land, if you consent the Trojan shall command. Called into part of what is ours, and there on terms agreed, the common country share. There let them build and settle if they please, unless they choose once more to cross the seas, in search of seats remote from Italy, and from unwelcome inmates set us free. Then twice ten galleys let us build with speed, or twice as many more if more they need. Materials are at hand, a well-grown wood runs equal with the margin of the flood. Let them the number and the form assign, the care and cost of all the stores be mine. To treat the peace a hundred senators shall be commissioned hence with ample powers, with olive the presence they shall bear, a purple robe, a royal ivory chair, and all the marks of sway that Latian monarchs wear, and sums of gold. Among yourselves debate this great affair, and save the sinking state. Then Dranches took the word, who grudged long since the rising glories of the Daunian prince, factious and rich, bold at the council board, but cautious in the field, he shunned the sword, a close caballer and tongue-valiant lord. Noble his mother was, and near the throne, but what his father's parentage unknown, he rose and took the advantage of the times to load young Turnus with invidious crimes. Such truths, O king, said he, your words contain, and strike the sense, and all replies are vain. Nor are your loyal subjects now to seek what common needs require, but fear to speak. Let him give leave of speech, that haughty man, whose pride this unauspicious war began, for whose ambition, let me dare to say, fear set apart, though death is in my way. The plains of Latium run with blood around, so many valiant heroes bite the ground, dejected grief in every face appears, a town in mourning and a land in tears, while he, the undoubted author of our harms, the man who menaces the gods with arms, yet after all his boasts forsook the fight, and sought his safety in ignoble flight. Now, best of kings, since you propose to send such bounteous presents to your Trojan friend, add yet a greater at our joint request, one which he values more than all the rest. Give him the fair Lavinia for his bride. With that alliance let the league be tied and for the bleeding land a lasting peace provide. Let insolence no longer awe the throne, but with a father's right bestow your own. For this maligner of the general good, if still we fear his force, he must be wooed. His haughty godhead we with prayers implore, your sceptre to release, and our just rights restore. O cursed cause of all our ills, must we wage wars unjust, and fall in fight for thee? What right hast thou to rule the Latian state, and send us out to meet our certain fate? Tis a destructive war, from Turnus' hand, our peace and public safety we demand. Let the fair bride to the brave chief remain, if not, the peace without the pledge is vain. Turnus, I know you think me not your friend, nor will I much with your belief contend. I beg your greatness not to give the law in others' realms, but beaten to withdraw. Pity your own, or pity our estate, nor twist our fortunes with your sinking fate. Your interest is the war should never cease, but we have felt enough to wish the peace. A land exhausted to the last remains, depopulated towns and driven plains. Yet if desire of fame and thirst of power, a beauteous princess with a crown in dower, so fire your mind, in arms assert your right, and meet your foe who dares you to the fight. 
Mankind, it seems, is made for you alone. We but the slaves who mount you to the throne, a base ignoble crowd without a name, unwept, unworthy of the funeral flame, by duty bound to forfeit each his life, that Turnus may possess a royal wife. Permit not mighty man so mean a crew should share such triumphs, and detain from you the post of honour your undoubted due. Rather alone your matchless force employ, to merit what alone you must enjoy. These words, so full of malice mixed with art, inflamed with rage the youthful hero's heart. Then groaning from the bottom of his breast he heaved for wind, and thus his wrath expressed. You, Dranques, never want a stream of words. Then, when the public need requires our swords, first in the council hall to steer the state, and ever foremost in a tongue debate, while our strong walls secure us from the foe, ere yet with blood our ditches overflow. But let the potent orator declaim, and with the brand of coward blot my name. Free leave is given him, when his fatal hand has covered with more corpse the sanguine strand, and high as mine his towering trophies stand. If any doubt remains who dares the most, let us decide it at the Trojan's cost, and issue both abreast, where honour calls, foes are not far to seek without the walls, unless his noisy tongue can only fight, and feet were given him but to speed his flight. I beaten from the field, I forced away, who but so known a dastard dares to say? Had he but even beheld the fight, his eyes had witnessed for me what his tongue denies, what heaps of Trojans by this hand were slain, and how the bloody Tiber swelled the main. All saw but he the Arcadian troops retire in scattered squadrons, and their prince expire. The giant brothers in their camp have found, I was not forced with ease to quit my ground. Not such the Trojans tried me, when, enclosed, I singly their united arms opposed, first forced an entrance through their thick array, then glutted with their slaughter freed my way. Tis a destructive war, so let it be, but to the Phrygian pirate and to thee. Meantime proceed to fill the people's ears with false reports, their minds with panic fears. Extol the strength of a twice-conquered race, our foes encourage and our friends debase. Believe thy fables, and the Trojan town triumphant stands, the Grecians are o'erthrown. Suppliant at Hector's feet Achilles lies, and Diomede from fierce Aeneas flies. Say rapid Aufidus, with awful dread, runs backward from the sea and hides his head, when the great Trojan on his bank appears, for that's as true as thy dissembled fears of my revenge. Dismiss that vanity, thou, Dranques, art below a death from me. Let that vile soul in that vile body rest, the lodging is well worthy of the guest. End of section 21《Section 22 of the Aeneid of Virgil. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book 11, Part 2. Now, royal father, to the present state of our affairs and of this high debate, if in your arms thus early you defied, and think your fortune is already tried, if one defeat has brought us down so low as never more in fields to meet the foe, then I conclude for peace. Tis time to treat and lie like vassals at the victor's feet. But, oh, if any ancient blood remains, one drop of all our fathers in our veins, that man would I prefer before the rest, who dared his death with an undaunted breast, who comely fell by no dishonest wound, to shun that sight, and dying gnawed the ground. But if we still have fresh recruits in store, if our confederates can afford us more, if the contended field we bravely fought, and not a bloodless victory was bought, their losses equalled ours, and for their slain with equal fires they filled the shining plain. Why thus unforced should we so tamely yield, 
and ere the trumpet sounds resign the field good unexpected evils unforeseen appear by turns as fortune shifts the scene some raised aloft come tumbling down amain then fall so hard they bound and rise again if diomede refuse his aid to lend the great messapus yet remains our friend tolumnius who foretells events is ours the italian chiefs and princes join their powers nor least in number nor in name the last your own brave subjects have your cause embraced above the rest the volscian amazon contains an army in herself alone and heads a squadron terrible to sight with glittering shields in brazen armor bright yet if the foe a single fight demand and i alone the public peace withstand if you consent he shall not be refused nor find a hand to victory unused this new achilles let him take the field with fated armor and vulcanian shield for you my royal father and my fame i turnus not the least of all my name devote my soul he calls me hand to hand and i alone will answer his demand dranques shall rest secure and neither share the danger nor divide the prize of war while they debate nor these nor those will yield aeneas draws his forces to the field and moves his camp the scouts with flying speed return and through the frighted city spread the unpleasing news the trojans are descried in battle marching by the riverside and bending to the town they take the alarm some tremble some are bold all in confusion arm the impetuous youth press forward to the field they clash the sword and clatter on the shield the fearful matrons raise a screaming cry old feeble men with fainter groans reply a jarring sound results and mingles in the sky like that of swans remurmuring to the floods or birds of differing kinds in hollow woods turnus the occasion takes and cries aloud talk on ye quaint harangers of the crowd declaim in praise of peace when danger calls and the fierce foes in arms approach the walls he said and turning short with speedy pace casts back a scornful glance and quits the place thou volusus the volscian troops command to mount and lead thyself our ardean band messapus and catillus post your force along the fields to charge the trojan horse some guard the passes others man the wall drawn up in arms the rest attend my call they swarm from every quarter of the town and with disordered haste the rampires crown good old latinus when he saw too late the gathering storm just breaking on the state dismissed the council till a fitter time and owned his easy temper as his crime who forced against his reason had complied to break the treaty for the promised bride some help to sink new trenches others aid to ram the stones or raise the palisade hoarse trumpets sound the alarm around the walls runs a distracted crew whom their last labor calls a sad procession in the streets is seen of matrons that attend the mother queen high in her chair she sits and at her side with downcast eyes appears the fatal bride they mount the cliff where palace temple stands prayers in their mouths and presents in their hands with censers first they fume the sacred shrine then in this common supplication join o patroness of arms unspotted maid propitious hear and lend thy latin's aid break short the pirate's lance pronounce his fate and lay the phrygian low before the gate now turnus arms for fight his back and breast well-tempered steel and scaly brass invest the quiches which his brawny thighs enfold are mingled metal damasked o'er with gold his faithful falchion sits upon his side nor cask nor crest his manly features hide but bare to view amid surrounding friends with godlike grace he from the tower descends exulting in his strength he seems to dare his absent rival and to promise war freed from his keepers thus with broken reins the wanton courser prances o'er the plains 
or in the pride of youth o'erleaps the mounds and snuffs the females in forbidden grounds or seeks his watering in the well-known flood to quench his thirst and cool his fiery blood he swims luxuriant in the liquid plain and o'er his shoulder flows his waving mane he neighs he snorts he bears his head on high before his ample chest the frothy waters fly soon as the prince appears without the gate the volscians with their virgin leader wait his last commands then with a graceful mien lights from their her lofty steed the warrior queen her squadron imitates and each descends whose common suit camilla thus commends if sense of honour if a soul secure of inborn worth that can all tests endure can promise aught or on itself rely greatly to dare to conquer or to die then i alone sustained by these will meet the tyrene troops and promise their defeat ours be the danger ours the sole renown you general stay behind and guard the town turnus a while stood mute with glad surprise and on the fierce virago fixed his eyes then thus returned o grace of italy with what becoming thanks can i reply not only words lie labouring in my breast but thought itself is by thy praise oppressed yet rob me not of all but let me join my toils my hazard and my fame with thine the trojan not in stratagem unskilled sends his light horse before to scour the field himself through steep ascents and thorny breaks a larger compass to the city takes this news my scouts confirm and i prepare to foil his cunning and his force to dare with chosen foot his passage to forlay and place an ambush in the winding way thou with thy volskins face the tuscan horse the brave messapus shall thy troops enforce with those of tiber and the latian band subjected all to thy supreme command this said he warns messapus to the war then every chief exhorts with equal care all thus encouraged his own troops he joins and hastes to prosecute his deep designs enclosed with hills a winding valley lies by nature formed for fraud and fitted for surprise a narrow track by human steps untrode leads through perplexing thorns to this obscure abode high o'er the vale a steepy mountain stands whence the surveying sight the nether ground commands the top is level an offensive seat of war and from the war a safe retreat for on the right and left is room to press the foes at hand or from afar to stress to drive em headlong downward and to pour on their descending backs a stony shower thither young turnus took the well-known way possessed the pass and in blind ambush lay meantime latonian phoebe from the skies beheld the approaching war with hateful eyes and called the light-foot opis to her aid her most beloved and ever trusty maid then with a sigh began camilla goes to meet her death amidst her more fatal foes the nymphs i loved of all my mortal train invested with diana's arms in vain nor is my kindness for the virgin new twas born with her and with her years it grew her father metapus when forced away from old privernum for tyrannic sway snatched up and saved from his prevailing foes this tender babe companion of his woes casmila was her mother but he drowned one hissing letter in a softer sound and called camilla through the woods he flies wrapped in his robe the royal infant lies his foes in sight he mends his weary pace with shout and clamours they pursue the chase the banks of amasene at length he gains the raging flood his farther flight restrains raised o'er the borders with unusual rains prepared to plunge into the stream he fears not for himself but for the charge he bears anxious he stops awhile and thinks in haste then desperate in distress resolves at last a knotty lance of well-boiled oak he bore the middle part with cork he covered o'er he closed the child within the hollow space with twigs of bending osier bound the case then poised the spear heavy with human weight and thus invoked my favour for the freight except great goddess of the woods he said 
sent by her sire this dedicated maid through air she flies a suppliant to thy shrine and the first weapons that she knows are thine he said and with full force the spear he threw above the sounding waves camilla flew then pressed by foes he stemmed the stormy tide and gained by stress of arms the farther side his fastened spear he pulled from out the ground and victor of his vows his infant nymph unbound nor after that in towns which walls enclose would trust his hunted life amidst his foes but rough in open air he chose to lie earth was his couch his covering was the sky on hills unshorn or in a desert din he shunned the dire society of men a shepherd's solitary life he led his daughter with the milk of mares he fed the dugs of bears and every savage beast he drew and through her lips the liquor pressed the little amazon could scarcely go he loads her with a quiver and a bow and that she might her staggering steps command he with a slender javelin fills her hand her flowing hair no golden fillet bound nor swept her trailing robe the dusty ground instead of these a tiger's hide o'erspread her back and shoulders fastened to her head the flying dart she first attempts to fling and round her tender temples tossed the sling then as her strength with years increased began to pierce aloft in air the soaring swan and from the clouds to fetch the heron and the crane the tuscan matrons with each other vied to bless their rival sons with such a bride but she disdains their love to share with me the sylvan shades and vowed virginity and oh i wish contented with my cares of savage spoils she had not sought the wars then had she been of my celestial train and shunned the fate that dooms her to be slain but since opposing heaven's decree she goes to find her death among forbidden foes haste with these arms and take thy steepy flight where with the gods averse the latins fight this bow to thee this quiver i bequeath this chosen arrow to revenge her death by whate'er hand camilla shall be slain or of the trojan or italian train let him not pass unpunished from the plain then in a hollow cloud myself will aid to bear the breathless body of my maid unspoiled shall be her arms and unprofaned her holy limbs with any human hand and in a marble tomb laid in her native land she said the faithful nymph descends from high with rapid flight and cuts the sounding sky black clouds and stormy winds around her body fly by this the trojan and the tuscan horse drawn up in squadrons with united force approach the walls the sprightly courses bound press forward on their bits and shift their ground shields arms and spears flash horribly from far and the fields glitter with a waving war opposed to these come on with furious force messapus chorus and the latian horse these in the body placed on either hand sustained and closed by fair camilla's band advancing in a line they couch their spears and less and less the middle space appears thick smoke obscures the field and scarce are seen the neighing coursers and the shouting men in distance of their darts they stop their course then man to man they rush and horse to horse the face of heaven their flying javelins hide and deaths unseen are dealt on either side tyrrhenus and aconteus void of fear by mettled coursers borne in full career meet first opposed and with a mighty shock their horses heads against each other knock far from his steed is fierce aconteus cast as with an engine's force or lightning's blast he rolls along in blood and breathes his last the latin squadrons take a sudden fright and sling their shields behind to save their backs in flight spurring at speed to their own walls they drew close in the rear the tuscan troops pursue and urge their flight asilus leads the chase till seized with shame they wheel about and face receive their foes and raise a threatening cry the tuscans take their turn to fear and fly so swelling surges with a thundering roar driven on each other's backs insult the shore 
bound o'er the rocks encroach upon the land and far upon the beach eject the sand then backward with a swing they take their way repulsed from upper ground and seek their mother sea with equal hurry quit the invaded shore and swallow back the sand and stones they spewed before twice were the tuscans masters of the field twice by the latins in their turn repelled ashamed at length to the third charge they ran both hosts resolved and mingled man to man now dying groans are heard the fields are strewed with falling bodies and are drunk with blood arms horses men on heaps together lie confused the fight and more confused the cry arsilochus who durst not press too near strong remulus at distance drove his spear and stuck the steel beneath his horse's ear the fiery steed impatient of the wound curvets and springing upward with a bound his helpless lord cast backward on the ground catillus pierced aeolus first then drew his reeking lance and at hermenius threw the mighty champion of the tuscan crew his neck and throat unarmed his head was bare but shaded with a length of yellow hair secure he fought exposed on every part a spacious mark for swords and for the flying dart across the shoulders came the feathered wound transfixed he fell and doubled to the ground the sands with streaming blood are sanguine dyed and death with honour sought on either side resistless through the war camilla rode in danger unappalled and pleased with blood one side was bare for her exerted breast one shoulder with her painted quiver pressed now from afar her fatal javelins play now with her axe's edge she hews her way diana's arms upon her shoulder sound and when too closely pressed she quits the ground from her bent bow she sends a backward wound her maids in martial pomp on either side larina tulla fierce tarpeia ride italians all in peace their queen's delight in war the bold companions of the fight so marched the tracian amazons of old when thermodon with bloody billows rolled such troops as these in shining arms were seen when theseus met in fight their maiden queen such to the field penthesilea led from the fierce virgin when the grecians fled with such returned triumphant from the war her maids with cries attend the lofty car they clash with manly force their moony shields with female shouts resound the phrygian fields who foremost and who last heroic maid on the cold earth were by thy courage laid thy spear of mountain ash eumenius first with fury driven from side to side transpierced a purple stream came spouting from the wound bathed in his blood he lies and bites the ground lyris and pegasus at once she slew the former as the slackened reins he drew of his faint steed the latter as he stretched his arm to prop his friend the javelin reached by the same weapon sent from the same hand both fall together and both spurn the sand a monstrous next is added to the slain the rest in rout she follows o'er the plain tereus harpalicus demophon and chromis at full speed her fury shun of all her deadly darts not one she lost each was attended with a trojan ghost young ornithus bestrode a hunter steed swift for the chase and of apulian breed him from afar she spied in arms unknown o'er his broad back an ox's hide was thrown his helm a wolf whose gaping jaws were spread a covering for his cheeks and grinned around his head he clinched within his hand an iron prong and towered above the rest conspicuous in the throng him soon she singled from the flying train and slew with ease then thus insults the slain vain hunter didst thou think through woods to chase the savage herd a vile and trembling race here cease thy vaunts and own my victory a woman warrior was too strong for thee yet if the ghosts demand the conqueror's name confessing great camilla save thy shame then butes and orsilochus she slew the bulkiest bodies of the trojan crew 
but Butes breast to breast the spear descends above the gorget where his helmet ends and o'er the shield which his left side defends orsilochus and she their courses ply he seems to follow and she seems to fly but in a narrower ring she makes the race and then he flies and she pursues the chase gathering at length on her deluded foe she swings her axe and rises to the blow full on the helm behind with such a sway the weapon falls the riven steel gives way he groans he roars he sues in vain for grace brains mingled with his blood besmear his face astonished onus just arrives by chance to see his fall nor farther dares advance but fixing on the horrid maid his eye he stares and shakes and finds it vain to fly yet like a true ligurian born to cheat at least while fortune favoured his deceit cries out aloud what courage have you shown who trust your courses strength and not your own forgo the vantage of your horse alight and then on equal terms begin the fight it shall be seen weak woman what you can when foot to foot you combat with a man he said she glows with anger and disdain dismounts with speed to dare him on the plain and leaves her horse at large among her train with her drawn sword defies him to the field and marching lifts aloft her maiden shield the youth who thought his cunning did succeed reins round his horse and urges all his speed adds the remembrance of the spur and hides the goring rowels in his bleeding sides vain fool and coward cries the lofty maid caught in the train which thou thyself hast laid on others practice thy ligurian arts thin stratagems and tricks of little hearts are lost on me nor shalt thou safe retire with vaunting lies to thy fallacious sire at this so fast her flying feet she sped that soon she strained beyond his horse's head then turning short at once she seized the rein and laid the boaster grovelling on the plain not with more ease the falcon from above trusses in middle air the trembling dove then plumes the prey in her strong pounces bound the feathers fell with blood come tumbling to the ground now mighty jove from his superior height with his broad eye surveys the unequal fight he fires the breast of tarkon with disdain and sends him to redeem the abandoned plain betwixt the broken ranks the tuscan rides and these encourages and those he chides recalls each leader by his name from flight renews their ardour and restores the fight what panic fear has seized your souls o shame o brand perpetual of the etrurian name cowards incurable a woman's hand drives breaks and scatters your ignoble band now cast away the sword and quit the shield what use of weapons which you dare not wield not thus you fly your female foes by night nor shun the feast when the full bowls invite when to fat offerings the glad augur calls and the shrill hornpipe sounds to bacchanals these are your studied cares your lewd delight swift to debauch but slow to manly fight thus having said he spurs amid the foes not managing the life he meant to lose the first he found he seized with headlong haste in his strong grip and clasped around the waist twas venulus whom from his horse he tore and laid athwart his own in triumph bore loud shouts ensue the latins turn their eyes and view the unusual sight with a vast surprise the fiery tarkon flying o'er the plains pressed in his arms the ponderous prey sustains then with his shortened spear explores around his jointed arms to fix a deadly wound nor less the captive struggles for his life he writhes his body to prolong the strife and fencing for his naked throat exerts his utmost vigour and the point averts so stoops the yellow eagle from on high and bears a speckled serpent through the sky fastening his crooked talons on the prey the prisoner hisses through the liquid way resists the royal hawk and though oppressed she fights in volumes and erects her crest turned to her foe she stiffens every scale and shoots her forky tongue and whisks her threatening tail against the victor all defence is weak 
the imperial bird still plies her with his beak he tears her bowels and her breast he gores then claps his pinions and securely soars thus through the midst of circling enemies strong tarchon snatched and bore away his prize the tyrene troops that shrunk before now press the latins and presume the like success then arons doomed to death his arts assayed to murder unespied the volscian maid this way and that his winding course he bends and wheresoe'er she turns her steps attends when she retires victorious from the chase he wheels about with care and shifts his place when rushing on she seeks her foe's flight he keeps aloof but keeps her still in sight he threats and trembles trying every way unseen to kill and safely to betray Chloreus, the priest of Sibylle, from far glittering in phrygian arms amidst the war was by the virgin viewed the steed he pressed was proud with trappings and his brawny chest with scales of gilded brass was covered o'er a robe of tyrian dye the rider wore with deadly wounds he galled the distant foe gnosian his shafts and lycian was his bow a golden helm his front and head surrounds a gilded quiver from his shoulder sounds gold weaved with linen on his thighs he wore with flowers of needlework distinguished o'er with golden buckles bound and gathered up before him the fierce maid beheld with ardent eyes fond and ambitious of so rich a prize or that the temple might his trophies hold or else to shine herself in trojan gold blind in her haste she chases him alone and seeks his life regardless of her own this lucky moment the sly traitor chose then starting from his ambush up he rose and threw but first to heaven addressed his vows o patron of socrates high abodes phoebus the ruling power among the gods whom first we serve whole woods of unctuous pine are felled for thee and thy glory shine by thee protected with our naked souls through flames unsinged we march and tread the kindled coals give me propitious power to wash away the stains of this dishonourable day nor spoils nor triumph from the fact i claim but with my future actions trust my fame let me by stealth this female plague o'ercome and from the field return in glorious home apollo heard and granting half his prayer shuffled in winds the rest and tossed in empty air he gives the death desired his safe return by southern tempests to the seas is borne now when the javelin whizzed along the skies both armies on camilla turned their eyes directed by the sound of either host the unhappy virgin though concerned the most was only deaf so greedy was she bent on golden spoils and on her prey intent till in her pap the winged weapon stood in fixed and deeply drunk the purple blood her sad attendants hastened to sustain their dying lady drooping on the plain far from their sight the trembling arons flies with beating heart and fear confused with joys nor dares he farther to pursue his blow or even to bear the sight of his expiring foe as when the wolf has torn a bullock's hide at unawares or wrenched a shepherd's side conscious of his audacious deed he flies and claps his quivering tail between his thighs so speeding once the wretch no more attends but spurring forward herds among his friends she wrenched the javelin with her dying hands but wedged within her breast the weapon stands the wood she draws the steely point remains she staggers in her seat with agonizing pains a gathering mist o'er clouds her cheerful eyes and from her cheeks the rosy colour flies then turns to her whom of her female train she trusted most and thus she speaks with pain aca tis past he swims before my sight inexorable death and claims his right bear my last words to turnus fly with speed and bid him timely to my charge succeed repel the trojans and the town relieve farewell and in this kiss my parting breath receive she said and sliding sunk upon the plain dying her opened hand forsakes the rain short and more short she pants 
by slow degrees her mind the passage from her body frees she drops her sword she nods her plumy crest her drooping head declining on her breast in the last sigh her struggling soul expires and murmuring with disdain to stygian sounds retires a shout that struck the golden stars ensued despair and rage the languished fight renewed the trojan troops and tuscans in a line advance to charge the mixed arcadians join but cynthia's maid high seated from afar surveys the field and fortune of the war unmoved a while till prostrate on the plain weltering in blood she sees camilla slain and round her corpse of friends and foes a fighting train then from the bottom of her breast she drew a mournful sigh and these sad words ensue too dear a fine ah much lamented maid for warring with the trojans thou hast paid nor aught availed in this unhappy strife diana's sacred arms to save thy life yet unrevenged thy goddess will not leave her votary's death nor with vain sorrow grieve branded the wretch and be his name abhorred but after ages shall thy praise record the inglorious coward soon shall press the plain thus vows thy queen and thus the fates ordain high o'er the field there stood a hilly mound sacred the place and spread with oaks around where in a marble tomb dercenus lay a king that once in latium bore the sway the beauteous opis thither bent her flight to mark the traitor arons from the height him in refulgent arms she soon espied swollen with success and loudly thus she cried thy backward steps vain boaster are too late turn like a man at length and meet thy fate charged with my message to camilla go and say i sent thee to the shades below an honour undeserved from cynthia's bow she said and from her quiver chose with speed the winged shaft predestined for the deed then to the stubborn yew her strength applied till the far distant horns approached on either side the bowstring touched her breast so strong she drew whizzing in air the fatal arrow flew at once the twanging bow and sounding dart the traitor heard and felt the point within his heart him beating with his heels and pangs of death his flying friends to foreign fields bequeath the conquering damsel with expanded wings the welcome message to her mistress brings their leader lost the volscians quit the field and unsustained the chiefs of turnus yield the frighted soldiers when their captains fly more on their speed than on their strength rely confused in flight they bear each other down and spur their horses headlong to the town driven by their foes and to their fears resigned not once they turn but take their wounds behind these drop the shield and those the lance forego or on their shoulders bear the slackened bow the hoofs of horses with a rattling sound beat short and thick and shake the rotten ground black clouds of dust come rolling in the sky and o'er the darkened walls and rampires fly the trembling matrons from their lofty stands rend heaven with female shrieks and wring their hands all pressing on pursuers and pursued are crushed in crowds a mingled multitude some happy few escape the throng too late rush on for entrance till they choke the gate even in the sight of home the wretched sire looks on and sees his helpless son expire then in a fright the folding gates they close but leave their friends excluded with their foes the vanquished cry the victors loudly shout tis terror all within and slaughter all without blind in their fear they bounce against the wall or to the moats pursued precipitate their fall the latian virgins valiant with despair armed on the towers the common danger share so much of zeal their country's cause inspired so much camilla's great example fired poles sharpened in the flames from high they throw with imitated darts to gall the foe their lives for godlike freedom they bequeath and crowd each other to be first in death meantime to turnus ambushed in the shade with heavy tidings came the unhappy maid the volscians overthrown camilla killed 
the foes entirely masters of the field like a resistless flood come rolling on the cry goes off the plain and thickens to the town inflamed with rage for so the furies fire the daunian's breast and so the fates require he leaves the hilly pass the woods in vain possessed and downward issues on the plain scarce was he gone when to the straits now freed from secret foes the trojan troops succeed through the black forest and the ferny brake unknowingly secure their way they take from the rough mountains to the plain descend and there in order drawn their line extend both armies now in open fields are seen nor far the distance of the space between both to the city bend aeneas sees through smoking fields his hastening enemies and turnus views the trojans in array and hears the approaching horses proudly neigh soon had their hosts in bloody battle joined but westward to the sea the sun declined entrenched before the town both armies lie while night with sable wings involves the sky end of section twenty two